Last weekend, we had two championship events and the conclusion of the Philippines Grand Asia Open. I'll be going through the leader breakdown from the top cuts of each event and a recap on the Philippines GAO. I will also be including deck lists for the winners and any other interesting ones that I come across. And as usual, at the end of this video, I'll be sharing with you the spreadsheet of all the tournament results compiled. We'll start off with the conclusion for the Philippines GAO. A little context on why I said conclusion. During the actual day, they had some management issues which caused the whole event to be delayed and they ended up needing to postpone the whole event to a month later. So here's a recap of the top 16 leaders. We have 4 Red Purple Law, 3 Katakuri which is really popular in Philippines, and then 2 CP0 Luchi, 2 Bonnie, 2 NL, 1 Kalgara, 1 Black Yellow Luffy, and 1 Yamato. I'm not sure if all top 16 players were from Philippines or there were some players that flew into Philippines to play and they didn't manage to finish their top 16, so I'm not sure about that. But here we have the top 4 leaders. We have 2 Bonnie, 1 Katakuri, and 1 RP Law. For the first time for a huge event, we didn't get a Luchi and Red Purple Law finals. Bonnie ended up winning the whole event which makes her to be the first green deck to even appear in top 4. Next, I'll share with you the Malaysia Championship which is unique in its own way. They had their championship split into 2 days and it is not a day 1 and day 2 event but they are two separate events on that weekend. They call it Port A for Day 1 and Port B for Day 2. To simplify, let's just say they had two championship tournaments on that weekend. Players from each port can't join the other port and they only had top 8 for each event. So I believe the reason why they are doing this is due to space constraint, which is why they had to split it into two days. So here's the leader breakdown from Port A. There were a total of 256 players, 8 rounds of space and top 8 cut. And the leader breakdown are 3 RP Law, 3 Black Yellow Luffy, 1 Luchi and 1 NL. NL got knocked off in the top 8, leaving 2 RP Law, 1 Luchi and 1 Black Yellow Luffy in top 4. And finally, the finals were between Luchi and RP Law. All the tournaments in OPO8 finals has only been this matchup other than Philippines. And Luchi ended up winning the day 1 of Malaysia Championship, which is quite surprising. So here's the deck list. Next, we are moving on to Port B aka Day 2 for Malaysia Championship. There were 220 players, again top 8 and 8 rounds of Swiss. This time, the variety for top 8 was a little less exciting. We had 5 RP Law and 3 Luchi. And then we have an even split of 2-2 in top 4. And again in the finals, we had Luchi against RP Law. So for 2 days in a row, this was the same finals in Malaysia. Luchi eventually winning the Malaysia Championship again for Day 2. And this is an interesting trend that we will see even for the Japan Championship later on. So here's the winner's list for Day 2. Now on to the Hyogo Championship Tournament which I did stream and if you're interested to watch, you can find the link to the stream in the description below. We had a couple of sweet new reveals from the stream and some awesome matches as well. So here's the top 16 leader breakdown. We had 10 RP Law, 3 CP0 Luchi and 3 NL. NL is finally showing up in top 16 and I also heard it was quite popular with the Egghead package with tons of trigger KO specifically tech for the RP Law matchup. Then in top 8, 7 RP Law got knocked out leaving only 3 of them left followed by 3 Luchi and 2 NL. In top 4 for the first time, we had 1 RP Law left, 1 Luchi and 2 NL. Usually, we'll have 3 RP Law plus another deck. So looking really good for NL here, taking up 50% of the top 4 slot. Finals was between RP Law and Luchi again for the third time this weekend. And also for the third time this weekend, CP0 Luchi ended up winning the whole championship tournament. So this is really interesting change. To be fair, out of all the RP Law matches that were on stream, all of them low roll. We only saw one Reju out of all the RP Law matches on stream. But again, the finals was between the top two decks of the format. So here's the deck list for the winner. And here's the run-ups deck list. To summarize, last weekend we had three separate events with three Luchi winning each of them. So Luchi used to have a bad matchup against RP Law but as can tell from the results last weekend, Luchi players are finding the list and adapting it for the Law matchup. Although we had 3 Luchi winners last weekend, if you look at the chart, RP Law still dominate in terms of presence in top 16 and top 4. With the new starter deck coming out, hopefully we get new leaders appearing on the list but highly doubtful as long as Luchi and RP Law remains at the top. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know in the comments below, do you prefer RP Law or Luchi or none? Also, follow me on Twitter for more One Piece TCG content and as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.